First, giving honor to God, who is the author and perfecter of my faith, I greet you once again with joy and with love that comes from knowing our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. I just give thanks to God for you and for everyone that has assisted this day and, then, and throughout last week to help me in leading worship today. The scripture lesson, the meditation, the word from God comes to us today from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah. And I'm going to read uh, two verses. It comes from Isaiah chapter 1, verses, verse 1, and then verses 10 through 20. It has been read for your hearing earlier, and we thank the, um, the readers. But I'd like to lift up two verses at this time. Focus verses of the meditation. Stop doing wrong. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Beloved, stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice, encourage the oppressed, defend the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Wake up, wake up to dangerous acts of worship. Let us look to the Lord. O thou in whose presence my soul does take delight, in times of affliction I call my comfort by day and my joy in the night, my hope, my salvation, my all. Eternal and wise God, I humbly come before you at this time, this weak vessel of clay. O oh Lord, I ask that you take me deep down in your treasures and that you lead me there. O oh merciful Lord, I ask that you bring forth your Holy Spirit, that you bring forth your preacher with words of conviction and words of love, that you bring forth your preacher, Lord, with your words, Bring forth your word, Lord. For Christ's sake we pray, and our souls do say, amen. Amen. Wake up. Wake up to dangerous acts of worship. In our text, we discover the messianic prophet Isaiah bringing a word from the Lord to the Israelite people, and to you, and to I today. What is this word? What is this message that God and Isaiah desire for all of us to hear, but equally important for us to apply to our lives today? As we look closely at the text, we discover that God has rejected the worship of the Israelite people because of the condition of their hearts and their sin. Oh, they have followed the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, and all the various laws outlined in Leviticus. For example, Leviticus 23, verse 3. There are six days there are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work. Wherever you live, it is to be a Sabbath unto the Lord. They came to worship to be seen on the Sabbath day. They came to worship to be seen in the presence of God by those who were assembled and by those who were not. The individuals that they may have left at home or those that they passed along the street. They brought with them to the altar of God their sacrifices, their burnt offerings, their prayers time and time again. Yet all the while, their actions were not an outward reflection of a repentant heart, nor were their actions a reflection 
of their gratitude and devotion to God. This could be said, or shall we say, could this be said about you and I today? Are we just like the Israelites? Do we have blood on our hands? Have we murdered others with words, with the tone of our voices, with critical, cold, and harsh looks? Have we oppressed others with our forceful nature and our refusal to acknowledge and respect their free will, a gift? that God has given to each of us, for each of us to choose which way we would go. Maybe, just maybe, we have oppressed others by failing to stand up to a bully, to speak out against injustice, to be courageous, to engage in dangerous acts of worship, to protest and to speak out against companies and corporations and institutions and civic groups and social groups, maybe the government or various political structures within various systems that we belong to. Or maybe we fail to speak up and speak out against an oppressor in our very home or even the church to speak out against individuals whose actions are destroying our families, our communities, and our environment. Failing to stand up for justice and for those that are weak and hurting and hungry. Maybe, just maybe, we too are like the Israelites that God and Isaiah are speaking to today. Beloved, God speaks to us now and he says to us, stop doing wrong and learn to do what is right. He says to us, he will no longer listen to us. Just as he said to the Israelites, I will not listen to you anymore, he said. I will not listen to you. I will not listen to your prayers. I no longer desire, I cannot stand your offerings. Whether it's your words of encouragement, whether it is your touch or embrace, whether it is your dollars or your time, the stench of them I cannot stand. Why? Why? Why do you refuse to change? Why? Why do you refuse not to obey, not to humble yourselves before me? Psalms 5 and 4 remind us, for you are not, you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. God can no longer face all of our sins and evilness. And this is why he reacted to the Israelites. Maybe, just maybe, if our individual prayers are not being heard, this is why he is not listening to us. Beloved, how can we change the situation? On this Communion Sunday, what can we do? as we look at the text and see what God called the Israelites to, he calls each of us to the same thing today. He calls us to wake up. Wake up to dangerous acts of worship. How do I do this? Well, first of all, I have to go to God in prayer and repent of my sin and ask for forgiveness. What sin have I committed in worship? I have made worship all about me. I have made worship about what I want to hear and how I want it to be. I have made worship about the way in which we engage in it in community. I have made worship 
about me. Repent of our desire to make worship about us. Isaiah tells us in chapter 1, verse 18, Come, come let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. When we repent of our sin and tell God we are sorry that we have made worship about us, then and only then do we engage in a dangerous act of worship. We engage in repentance. The Bible says that when we do that, 1 John chapter 1 and 9 remind us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. In other words, he will create in us a clean heart and a renewed spirit where our hearts will be focused on him and no longer on self. And therefore, our worship how do we engage in a dangerous act of worship? Tell God I'm sorry I made worship all about me. And then be bold and courageous and make worship all about him. This is how we engage in a dangerous act of worship. By accepting the invitation of the Holy Spirit to worship him by changing and shifting our attention away from self, from me and mine and ours, and focusing our attention on the living God, on the living God, by submitting to ourselves and others that worship is not about us, but it's all about him. By remembering Psalms 50, 95 and 6, where David said, come, come, come let us bow before the Lord in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. Let us humble ourselves before him and give him glory and praise. Let us magnify the Lord. Let us enter into his presence and say glory, 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 hallelujah, you are awesome, you are mighty, you are great, you are wonderful. I give you all honor and praise. Let us be bold in our worship. Let us be dangerous in our worship. Let us clap our hands. Let us raise our hands. Let us shout for joy. Let us dance before the Lord and say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I just say you're wonderful. You're awesome. You're mighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let us be dangerous in our worship. In our worship. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about how we do it in tradition. Worship is about you who he is, the creator of all things, the one that has power and control over everything, humbling ourselves before him, the very dust of the earth, the clay. How can we make worship about us? Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us lie before him and say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Because you could have struck me down when I said what I said. You could have struck me down when I failed to love. You could have struck me down with lightning in the midst of my sin. But I want to say thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord, this day. And as we move forward, let us engage in dangerous acts of worship.
Let us say we're sorry, God, for making worship about me, about our traditions, about our likes, about our dislikes, about our formality. Let us repent of it and say, God, worship is about you. And let us engage in dangerous acts of worship. Praise him. Sing joy to him. Clap our hands. Dance before him. Let us worship him for who he is. Wonderful, mighty, and great. Dangerous actions of worship. How do we do this? Yes, it's repentance. Yes, it's coming into his presence, whether the sanctuary or at home or in a tent. You remember when we used to go to camp meeting and go down there behind the fire and get out there and praise the Lord? You remember, I don't know about you, but I remember when we used to sit on the mourner's bench when we were sinful and ask God to forgive us. I remember when we used to come. We used to come, oh Lord. Lord, dangerous acts of worship is speaking up, engaging in acts of justice. Worship is more than when we come into the sanctuary. Worship is being a disciple of Christ, being the salt of the earth and the light, going out and saying, that is wrong. Being a martyr for Jesus. Each day of our lives, dangerous acts of worship. Yes, people won't like us. Yes, we will get our feelings hurt. Yes, we may lose property and possessions. Yes, they may put us in jail. Yes, they may even kill us for Christ. Dangerous actions of worship. Standing up for the poor. More than giving money. More than fixing dinners. Going to companies and governments and systems and saying, you are wrong. We will no longer stand for not having a living wage. You are wrong for not providing for children and women. You are wrong. Dangerous actions of worship. Dangerous actions of worship God calls us to each day of our lives. Will we engage in true worship? The Bible says you worship him in spirit and in truth. Where is the truth in our worship? Truth in worship is manifested in our actions, not in our complicity. Worship. This day, God encourages us to engage in dangerous actions of worship. Be courageous. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Let us say so for the orphan, for the widow, for someone who's hurting. When dangerous actions of worship God calls us to this day. Amen.